Okay, we're back. Let's see what Jack has to say about all this. Jack doesn't appear to be around, but I think I'll wait. Yeah. Jack doesn't appear to be around at the moment, so we're just gonna help him organize a bit. And yeah, like half the screwdrivers we had to find were there. No idea where that ribbon is. I really don't know where the ribbon is. Shit. Oh, that's it. that last screwdriver now. No, seriously, where is it? That last screwdriver. I'm serious now. Where is it? Are you kidding me? I can't find it. Not going to use a hint. Oh, there it is. Hmm. Humble chemicals. Didn't you see that on 
the coffee mug? And Something I can help you with? You sounded Hello, really Jack. Robotic. Is this your flyer for this year's garden contest? Yep. It says here, sponsored by Humboldt Chemical. Yeah, they put up $5,000 cash and $5,000 worth of free humble chemical garden products now for the he winner. Human. My goodness, that's quite a generous prize. Not only that, the winner gets to compete in a New England wide competition where the prizes are even bigger. I suppose that would explain why Matthew and Avery were spying on each other, despite their rivalry, just being a friendly one. Oh. It wasn't so friendly, Jessica. Not with all that prize money and free gardening products at stake. Once Matthew even asked me to tell him some of Avery's secrets, but I didn't want to get in the middle of it. Oh, before I forget, Avery asked me to return your leather gloves to you. Those aren't my gloves. They aren't. Avery said you left them at his garden yesterday morning. No. Those gloves look pretty new. If they came from Main Coast Garden Center, maybe Carol remembers who she sold them to. Good thinking. I'll go ask her. Mm. Let's ask her. Who did she sell the gloves to? Maybe she's a little more organized now that things have kind of calmed down, hopefully. Miss Sullivan, do you sell this brand of leather work gloves here? Yes, I do. Why? We were wondering if you might remember who bought this particular pair recently. Uh, I don't know, but I can probably find the invoice. I'm still looking for Avery's invoice, too. It's been so crazy here, and I'm shorthanded. If I come across either one, I'll let you know, Sheriff. Thanks. Are you okay, Carol? Not really. Things have been so crazy. I have customers coming in for the latest seed shipment, but the packets have gotten lost. Uh-oh. Well, why don't you take a moment to look for that invoice while Mort and I get this sorted out? Good idea. We clean up the mess. <laughs> And you get the invoice, hopefully. Yeah, this poor woman needs some, like, help. What's really weird is that for... I'm starting to remember, like, the last case in this game, by the way. Um, and, yeah, I'm kind of right on it being kind of a much more unlikable character-heavy version of the Maple case. <clears throat> Excuse me? You'll see. Okay, we have to go by each of these symbols. So, that blooms in summer. This blooms in fall. Here we'll need that. Uh, butterfly. Eep. Blooms in spring.
blooms in fall. Yeah, I'm getting a little driven a little crazy. This is an annual I need an annual up there. Oh There Yay Oh Jessica, bless you. You have no idea how much you helped me out here today. I have bad news though. I still haven't found that invoice. I'll keep looking though, I promise. That's fine, Carol. I noticed that you're still waiting on that mulch order. Yes, I'm afraid so. Add it to my list of worries. I've got customers clamoring for it left and right. There you are. The final toxicology results from Matthew's autopsy have come in. The poison was definitely ricin. Uh-oh. Are you sure? Absolutely. It must have been introduced through the small punctures I found in his hand, since there was no trace of any poison in his stomach and no other visible wounds. Hmm. The rose in Matthew's hand. Maybe the punctures were inflicted by the thorns on the rose he was holding when we found him. They certainly could have been. Kind of makes the ownership of those reinforced leather gardening gloves Avery found all the more important. I wonder if it's possible to trace a flower back to the person who grew it. It is, if the flower is fairly rare. And the person to ask about this flower would be Thomas Pickering. How are you going to carry the flower around when it has ricin on it? It, yeah, death by rose. <laughs> Matthew was killed by the fucking rose. Any chance you could tell us what kind of rose this is, Mr. Pickering? Just carry it in your bare hand. Go ahead. Hmm. It's a Verona rose. Very rare. How many people in Cabot Cove grow Verona roses? One. As far as I know, just one. Emily Wiseboro. She's actually gained some notoriety among rose enthusiasts because of her Veronas. Is that why she earns at least an honorable mention in the garden competition every year? Oh, yeah. It's fair to say so, and she really does an excellent job with them. Would you mind if we poke around a little while we're here? Not at all. Again, as I said, Emily didn't... Like, it seems to be pointing to her, but she didn't do it. Like, where would she fucking get the rice in? Because her specialty is roses, not castor beans. But, yeah, her, her specialty is roses, and she's... And once again, Humboldt Chemicals. The coffee cup had it, too, in the uh, victim's garden. That off rather well, and we can really hear the uh, the um, inflection. But I'm gonna assume that the uh, that was brushed off rather quickly, you know, because this is literally threatening a position of somewhat power, judging by how seriously people took these events. Um, You know, being the Garden Club president would be a fairly good position to be in. Might have a little bit of clout. Mm -hmm. 
So for someone to say, I'm going to take away your position, I take that threat seriously, temper or no. But that's just me. So that's kind of, you know, raising an eyebrow or two in my case. But again, I'm just being a detective, which is... A det this is a detective game, technically. There's the horse. Oh, he's a flat screen. Nice. Gives you an idea that this isn't a modern times. So Emily's the only one who grows Verona roses in Cabot Cove. Pretty. Don't jump to any conclusions, Sheriff. She, yeah, she reins them in. If she grew the murder weapon in her garden, she has a lot of explaining to do, starting now. Although he has a point. Although, to be fair, somebody could have snipped the rose from her garden, which probably would have pissed her off, but... Emily, do you mind if we take a look at your rose bushes? Go ahead. They are award-winning, you know. And she's rightfully proud of them. Humble chemical to sponsor local gardening companies to local botanical maven. Oh, he used to work there. That would explain why they got the, uh... I guess the sponsorship, as it were. Again, that music is oddly sinister for, you know, this game. I mean, for one, the murder isn't actually upcoming, you know. He's kinda dead. There... Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember if in this game you actually do meet a victim before they die. Okay, where's the frickin' sparrow? And I know I saw it earlier. Never play this game when you're tired, by the way. You need your eyes at full strength. And yeah, that's a puzzle we're gonna have to solve to get the peach rose. It's a retread of the uh, cigar puzzle from the very beginning of the game. There's the sparrow. I'll show you. First shot, nice. That's the rose we want, so we'll leave that alone. Or not. No, it's not the one. That's the one. Okay, I'll stay up there then. That was fast. Well, let's ask her. Did somebody take your rose or did you, like, do something? Mrs. Wiseborough, we know that the rose that was used to kill Matthew O'Neill came from your garden. The one we found in his hand exactly matches the ones you grow. I didn't kill Matthew. The evidence points to you, I'm afraid. You had means, motive, and opportunity. 
I can prove I didn't kill him. I was on the phone with my sister in California at the time that Matthew was killed. The telephone records will bear this out, Sheriff. Besides, anyone could have come into her yard. And where would she have obtained the ricin? That's what I asked. Where the hell would you get ricin? You got a point there. Emily, did you ever have any reason to suspect that the garden competition was being rigged in Avery's favor? Oh, boy. I always suspected that Thomas and Avery had some sort of special arrangement that kept Avery in first place every year. So it wasn't just Matthew What made you think it? this? Well, that newspaper article you found, for one thing. After Thomas retired from Humboldt Chemicals, he used his connections with the company to increase the competition's prize and prestige in New England. He neglected to tell us he used to work for Humboldt Chemicals. Is that why he was made president of the Garden Club? Yes, it's also why our friendly garden exhibition turned into the fiercely contested event it is today. Everyone's spreading tales about everyone else. That's why she's so paranoid. With so much at stake in the garden competition, it would be surprising if there wasn't cheating involved. And it all started when Thomas became president of the club. We need to talk to him and find out if Emily's claim that Thomas and Avery had the competition rigged is true. Hmm. So, both Matthew and Emily suspected that the uh, gardening competition was rigged. Meaning... Something's up. And, uh... If that's the case... Was there something threatening their nice little happy arrangement? Maybe Matthew had more of a threat than we think. Let's find out, shall we? Okay, Mr. Pickering, level with us. How did Avery Donaldson really win first place in the garden competition year after year? His garden is consistently the best. That's all there is to it. Thomas, what exactly did you do before you came to Cabot Cove? I used to be a chemist. So Why didn't you tell us that before? I didn't think it was relevant. Hmm. I'm afraid it is relevant, Thomas, since Matthew was murdered with ricin, a poison that was chemically extracted from castor beans. And that's something you'd have the knowledge to accomplish. My work at Humboldt Chemicals is what got me interested in how chemistry could improve gardening. But it isn't a reason to suspect me of murder. Besides, I don't have access to castor beans. He's right. He has a point. Wait. Thinking on it... Who would have access to castor beans in Cabot Cove? Because, well, no. Pickering wouldn't have access to castor beans. I'm guessing castor beans are kind of hard to get. But somebody who maybe works with tropical plants might? You know. But he wouldn't have the knowledge to extract the castor oil. Because I don't think he's a chemist, too. Kind of a really fucked up coincidence. You know, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. Because I can... Because why would even Emily want access to rice? And she... W with, uh, not right, with castor beans. She works with roses. Castor beans don't grow roses. And Jack Delgado wouldn't have access or the knowledge to do either one of those things himself. Um, nor would he want to. Besides, the bill wouldn't get paid if the guy was dead. Thinking on it. 
That's something I never understand. Oh, the guy who we owed money to killed him. Why would the guy who you owe money to kill you if you're more valuable alive? They even pointed that out in the first case. If you owe money, why would he kill him? That's a bad business plan. So that leaves, well, that leaves me trying to find two books thinking on it. Ugh. But that leaves we have a chemist who has the knowledge and a person who might have access. This is one I forgot. Wow. Oh man, I don't remember this puzzle at all. Shit. There was something very special with each tumbler. Like, um. Okay, all but this one has that. Oh, I think it's the one all of them have. Forgive the really bad noise, but it's it's like I'm trying to remember this puzzle from ages ago. Nope, it ain't that one. Oh, it ain't that one either. We know it's not that one. That one either. Not that one. Nope. Ain't that one either.
got it. That was it. It was the one that's all the same. Jeez, what is with these guys trying to hit it on the poor Mexican dude? Maybe we better speak with Jack again. It seems he might be the one with the real temper, not Matthew. I like these snacks. Next time we again bother Jack over this when I'm pretty sure he didn't do it since why the fuck would he have rice and catch you next time. <laughs>